Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's talk about the current trends in health and fitness. Nowadays, it seems as though everyone in the wealthiest parts of the world is battling with their weight, and as a consequence, more and more people are joining local gyms or buying home exercise machines. In fact, according to the International Health, Racket, and Sports Club Association, Membership in health clubs in America doubled from a little over 17 million in 1987 to more than 36 million in 2005. While the figures for Europe are harder to come by, evidence over the past decade suggests that health club membership has doubled there as well. What few people nowadays realise is that the average person in the developed world is now burning 800 fewer calories a day than a generation ago. This means that even if people today ate no more than the previous generation, they would still be getting fatter. Unfortunately, instead of eating less than their parents did, as they should, many people consume a lot more. So, what exactly has brought about this change in fitness levels? Well, people in developed countries are not only eating more, but are also doing less exercise. Increased technology has not helped. The car and other such machines designed to help reduce our workload are as much to blame as deep fried fast food. On top of this, the changes in how and where we work have reduced the amount of daily calories people actually need. Such factors are taking their toll on our health, with health costs soaring. And this is where exercise machines come in. Walking machines or treadmills and the like may not be the most efficient way of burning off those excess calories and boosting cardiovascular fitness, but they are certainly the most common. According to the Sporting Goods Manufacturing Association International, some 45 million Americans used a treadmill in 2003. That's an amazing number of people and an awful lot of treadmills. Having said that, an exercise machine that did not even exist a decade ago, the elliptical cross trainer, is fast replacing the traditional treadmill. As its name implies, the machine delivers an elliptical or swinging motion, with both the hands and feet tracing semicircular patterns. The feet on two moving platforms rather than bicycle pedals, and the hands gripping handles that move but are not meant to support any weight, which is important as there is no seat. Since the machine was introduced in 1998, the number of people using elliptical machines in America has tripled to more than 11 million a year. We have been doing some tests to find out if these machines are actually any better than the previous machines, or if they are just another passing trend. Dr. John Pokari, a professor of exercise and sports science, believes that ellipticals are at least better than the previous exercises, but no better than treadmills in terms of increasing cardiovascular fitness. In one set of tests, Dr. Pokari measured the oxygen consumption, heart rate, and calorific expenditure of 16 volunteers, and found that there was virtually no difference between elliptical machines and treadmills. But elliptical machines have a lower impact on the user than running, claim their manufacturers. True, says Dr. Pakari, who measured the ground reaction forces of the test subjects on the various machines. Running on a treadmill results in forces that are roughly two and a half times the subject's body weight, but using an elliptical machine gives forces that are roughly equal to the subject's weight. This is much kinder on the body and makes the impact comparable to that of walking. In that respect, ellipticals are superior. However, those who do not want to shell out for fancy exercise machines will be heartened by the results of a seminal study in 1969 by Lewis Pugh, a British physiologist, which has been confirmed many times since. Dr. Pugh found that when reaching speeds above 14 kilometers per hour or so, running on firm ground uses up substantially more calories and therefore leads to a greater reduction in weight than running on a treadmill or using an elliptical machine. Dr. Pugh attributed the difference to air resistance. 
Manufacturers of exercise machines point out correctly that running on firm ground creates a greater force on the body's joints than using machines, in particular the knees and ankles. But what they don't say is that modern running shoes go a long way to reducing the impact of such forces. So perhaps the best exercise of all is simply to leave the car at home and run to the gym, and then right past it. After that, just keep going and going and going.